The carnivore diet is here. Just eat nothing but meat and you will be as healthy as a lion in the wild. Or so they say. But is it really a recipe for health or just a fast track to the heart attack grill? First, let's talk about what the carnivore diet is. It is a dietary pattern that emphasizing eating only animal products such as meat, fish and eggs while excluding all other food groups like fruits, vegetables, grains and legumes. The idea behind this diet is that our ancestors evolved to eat meat-based foods and thus a plant-based diet is unnatural for humans. Some advocates go as far as to claim plant foods are toxic for us. This diet craze has been spreading like wildfire on the internet and social media thanks to some well-known influencers. But as a certified internal medicine physician and nutritionist, I'm here to offer you some real food for thought, pun intended. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at this trendy diet and see if it's truly worth all the buzz. Specifically, we'll be examining a one-day carnivore menu consisting of four ribeye steaks and two pork chops with all the fat still on. That might sound a little bit odd, but the reason I selected this amount is because it really takes that much meat to get 2000 calories. So let's dig into these nutritional claims and see what's really worth sinking our teeth into. Let's start off by taking a bird's eye view to this menu. Take a look at this graph that showcases an in-depth analysis of approximately 20 essential nutrients as provided by the sample carnivore menu presented above. The green vertical line represents the 100% recommended daily allowance for each nutrient. What do you see? It doesn't take an expert in reading bar graphs to realize that a calorically adequate carnivore diet provides well in excess of the RDA for protein, fat and cholesterol. However, it provides well below the RDA for a dozen or more nutrients, many of which are below 20% of the daily needs for the average adult. This image alone should be sufficient to convince any reasonable person that the carnivore diet is nothing more than a passing fad that lacks any scientific basis. A diet that provides such an imbalance of nutrients is not sustainable or healthy in the long term. If you are still on the fence, however, about the importance of these nutrients, let's dive deeper and explore some of the implications of these imbalances. Let's first talk about fiber. It's like a superhero to our digestive system, helping to keep things running smoothly and preventing pesky constipation. But here's the thing, meat has zero fiber. Besides keeping things moving in our gut, fiber also helps to produce something called small chain fatty acids. These little guys are like sidekicks to the fiber superhero. They do all sorts of amazing things in our colon. For example, they can help regulate the expression of certain proteins and even induce programmed death in colon cancer cells, guys. And that's not all. Short chain fatty acids have a ton of other benefits like helping to regulate metabolism, fighting inflammation, reducing weight gain. So if you care about your health, make sure to get enough fiber in your diet, at least 30 grams a day. Your colon and your whole body will thank you for it. Another big issue with carnivore diets is protein overconsumption. A meat-based diet will inevitably lead to this issue. I know, I know, you'll probably be thinking, but meat is a complete protein, doc. Sure it is, but hear me out. Depending on how your carnivore diet menu is put together, you could end up eating easily up to five times more protein than your body requires in a day. Now, I get it. In a world where high protein diets are all the rage for weight loss and muscle building, it's easy to assume that more is always better, right? But here's the catch. Regularly consuming excessive amounts of protein can actually have some serious negative effects to your health. Let me give you the science bit behind this and think about kidney, bones and heart. Let's talk about kidneys first. Did you know that gobbling up hits of protein can be a real pain in the kidneys? It can cause your intraglomerular pressure to go up, the pressure inside the filtering unit of the kidney and your glomerular filtration to go into overdrive. And trust me, you don't want that because it can lead to damage in your glomerular structure, which can either bring on or make chronic kidney disease worse. This is because the body has to work harder to break down and remove excess protein. We don't store excess protein. At the end of the day, whatever we don't use has to be broken down 
and kidneys are a part of eliminating some of these byproducts of protein digestion. Eating too much animal protein boosts the level of uric acid and could lead to kidney stones. A high-protein diet also reduces levels of citrate, the chemical in the urine that helps prevent kidney stones from forming. Overconsumption of protein can have implication for bone health. Now, early studies suggested that excess protein can increase the risk of osteoporosis. The idea was that protein can leach calcium from the bones, increasing the risk of fractures. However, more recent studies have shown that this is actually not the case, as long as you are getting enough calcium. In fact, some studies have shown that eating more protein can actually be good for your bones, especially if you are a postmenopausal lady trying to lose some weight. The problem with carnivore diets, however, is that they are poor in calcium, as we'll see in a minute. So this benefit will likely not materialize. And in fact, the concern for bone loss may actually play out in this scenario. We just don't have studies to show that yet. Now let's talk about the effects of protein overconsumption on heart health. Recent studies have suggested that a high protein diet may increase the risk of heart disease. And here is an article discussing them. How, you may be wondering? Okay, so imagine you just had a big juicy steak for dinner. Your body breaks that down and the protein in it becomes amino acids. These amino acids are the building blocks of protein and they flow through your bloodstream and end up in all sorts of places, including in places you don't want them to be, like the plaque in your arteries. There, they can stimulate the growth of plaque by activating a protein system called mTORC1. mTORC1 is a signaling pathway in our bodies that helps cells grow and divide. Within plaque, one of the best studied cells are macrophages, which are a type of immune cell that play a key role in the development and progression of atherosclerosis, or plaque. And these macrophages are responsible for taking up and processing the excess cholesterol and lipids or fat that accumulate within the plaque. Now, when mTORC1 is activated in plaque macrophages, it can lead up to buildup of dysfunctional mitochondria inside the macrophages. I'm sure you remember the mitochondria are those tiny organelles found in most of our cells responsible for producing the majority of the cell's energy. When they become dysfunctional, mitochondria can trigger a process called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. The increased apoptosis of plaque macrophages can contribute to the formation of a necrotic core in the plaque. And this necrotic core is a dead area of tissue, basically, that is rich in cholesterol and other lipids. And this is where the most likely rupture of the plaque happens, leading to a heart attack or a stroke. Here's the thing, though. Only certain amino acids with leucine leading the list are potent activators of mTORC1 in macrophages. And guess what? Leucine is found mostly in meat, like beef and chicken, and not so much in veggies and grains. So how much protein is too much? About 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is what we need. That's about 56 grams of protein for a 150 pound person. If you are very active physically or are a professional athlete, say, higher levels up to 1.2, 1.5 milligrams per kilogram may be advisable. But when you are at that level of activity, your appetite will be proportionately higher, which will make you eat more food. And thus, your protein needs will be taken care of automatically without you having to track and supplement. If you have kidney disease, on the other hand, your doctor may recommend that you eat even less protein. Nutrient imbalances of carnivore diets do not end here, unfortunately. And here are a few more. Animal products, which are the corner store of the carnivore diet, tend to be pretty high in both total and saturated fat. For instance, a measly three ounce serving of cooked beef can contain up to 10 grams of total fat and 4.5 grams of saturated fat. And while that might only set you back about 150 calories, it's important to remember that we need a lot more energy than that in a day. In fact, if you're going to stick with this diet, you'll need to consume at least 10 to 15 times that amount just to meet your daily energy requirements. But here's where things get a little dicey. Consuming that much animal fat can lead to some pretty hefty intake uh, levels of total and saturated fat. We're talking about uh, well over 100 grams of total fat and 45 plus grams of saturated fat each day. To put that in perspective, current recommendations are that we limit our saturated fat intake to no more than 6% of our daily calories. So for 2000 calorie diet, that's about 13 grams per day. 
Now, excessive intake of total and saturated fat can increase your risk of heart disease, stroke, and other chronic illnesses. So, you know how animal foods are where the cholesterol is at, right? I'm sure you've heard some folks claim that there is no link between dietary cholesterol and blood cholesterol and uh, risk of heart disease and stroke. But here's something important that you need to know. The truth is, a lot of the studies these people used to support their claims were actually funded by the meat and egg industry. They are not telling you about the rest of the research that shows a clear connection between cholesterol and the risk of heart disease, stroke, and other cardiovascular issues. So let's look at our carnivore diet for a day menu. It's got a whooping 777 milligrams of cholesterol, which is three times more than what's considered safe. I don't know about you, but eating like this looks like playing Russian roulette to me. Let's talk about the big C now, the calcium. This is a crucial element in our diet, but it can be tricky to get enough on a carnivore diet. Remember that sample carnivore menu that we talked about earlier? Well, it only provides about 240 milligrams of calcium, which is less than 20% of the recommended daily amount for the average adult. Now, some people who swear by the carnivore lifestyle will tell you to chow down on every part of the animal from nose to tail in order to get your calcium fix. They claim also that by eating the bones, you'll get all the calcium that you need. But here's the thing, bone broth, which is often touted as a great source of nutrients, actually doesn't pack much of a mineral punch. Recent studies from the USDA found that bone broth only contains nine to 14 milligrams of calcium per cup. To put that in perspective, a cup of silky smooth soy milk contains about 290 milligrams of calcium. That's a whooping 30 times more than the bone broth. The issue can be especially relevant in the context of carnivore diets being very rich in protein, as we discussed earlier. While bone density may not suffer under high protein intakes as long as there is adequate dietary calcium intake, under a strict carnivore diet, we could very well see a lot of osteoporosis. And in fact, we see that in Alaskan Eskimos older than 40 who have 10 to 15% greater deficit of bone mineral density compared to Caucasians in the US, according to this study. Vitamin C is an essential nutrient that our bodies cannot produce on their own and is primarily found in fruits and vegetables. Without it, we can develop scurvy, a disease that causes fatigue, muscle weakness, and joint pain. But wait, doc, you'll say, every carnivore advocate out there claims they follow this diet for months and years and they never got scurvy. And there is a reason for that, my friend. They cheat. They either use a multivitamin supplement containing vitamin C and calcium and other things every day, or they still eat vitamin C rich foods. I'm not making this up. Look at this study of so-called carnivore diet followers often cited to support the benefits of this diet. A majority of participants were consuming vitamin C containing plant foods on a regular basis. Another shortcut that they take is by eating liver and other organ meats. And while these have a bit more vitamin C, it is still problematic because vitamin C is thermolabile, which means a lot of it is destroyed by heat in the process of cooking. In addition to this, organ meats are especially rich in saturated fat and cholesterol. Finally, let's talk about some vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin D, K, folate, and even a mineral like magnesium. These are the prime contenders for the biggest losers title on the menu of the carnivore diet that we are analyzing. If you stick to this diet, your vitamin D intake will be less than 25% of your daily requirements. Now, including seafood definitely gives you a boost of vitamin D, but the same cannot be said for the other essential vitamins as they are provided at a meager level of less than 10% usually of your daily requirement on any carnivore diet. As you may have noticed, the carnivore diet is fraught with a plethora of nutritional imbalances. The list is longer though and includes shortcomings such as inadequate intake of antioxidants, uh, pro-inflammatory effects, obesogenic effects, among others. I'm not going to cover this here today because this video is already getting too long. You may be wondering though at this point, if carnivore diets are so bad, how come we hear so many people who have tried them and tout their multiple benefits? The answer to this question is complex and fascinating. And if you guys want me to make a video on this topic, make sure to let me know in the comments section. And while you're at it, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so, if you find this content helpful. As I hope you've noticed, I build this video on facts and nutrition data that is indisputable. These are not just my opinions. It is my sincere hope 
that the data I share with you will persuade you that the carnivore diet's lack of balanced nutrition is not merely a turn of phrase, but a genuine concern that should be not taken lightly. So, should you consider a carnivore diet? My recommendation as a physician, as a nutritionist, is to avoid it altogether. Instead, focus on a balanced diet that includes a variety of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and lean protein sources. This will provide your body with all the essential nutrients it needs to function properly without putting your health at risk. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. If you have any questions and comments, please again let me know in the comment section below. And as always, please remember to take care of yourself and your health and see you in the next one.